In this video, you'll create and run a Java FX application using IntelliJ Community Edition, the free version. Stick around until the end, and I'll show you how to create and run a custom runtime image of your Java FX application. Here on the welcome page, let's create an application from scratch by selecting New Project. In the New Project window, we'll select the features we want to use to create our application. IntelliJ provides a generator for creating Java FX applications over on the left side of the screen. Let's select that first since it will change the options available to us. And I'll give our project the name of FX Maven. The location is fine. I'll post this code on GitHub. There's a link to the code in the description below this video. We'll keep Java as the primary language. For the build system, we'll use Maven. And we'll change the group ID to com.beginsecure. To be able to create the image that we want later in the video, we'll need to select Java 9 or later. Java 17 is selected here, so we're all good. Everything looks good, so let's click the Next button. On this page, IntelliJ lets us select the Java FX libraries we'd like to include in our project. No matter which ones we select, IntelliJ is going to create some code for us which will be the same. Let's go ahead and select Control FX. It's added as a dependency in the lower right corner. There's nothing else to do here except click the Create button. IntelliJ creates our project and loads it into the IDE. The startup is a bit slower than usual since IntelliJ is generating and compiling a sample project for us. It's a bit more than just a simple Hello World application, so it will take just a moment. Now that it's done, let's look at the code it created for us. First is the main application called HelloApplication.java. At the bottom, it has the main method, which serves as the entry point into our Java application, just like we'd see in any other application. It calls the launch method, which starts up the Java FX application. Notice the class extends the application class from the package javafx.application. The launch method calls the init method of the application class, which creates an instance of the application class and calls the start method, which our code overrides. The start method defines the initial user interface. The method loads an XML file that generates the graphical user interface for us. And it uses that file to construct a scene object. Then sets the title, the scene, and makes the stage visible with the call to show. Next is the Hello Controller class. Controllers are used to manage user interactions with the user interface in JavaFX applications and the interactions defined in the FXML file. The two FXML annotations mean the FXML file can access the welcome text object reference and the on hello button click method. The on hello method is invoked when a button is clicked in the FXML file, as we'll see. Next is the FXML file that defines the user interface. The things to notice here are the attribute that references the controller class that we just saw, as well as the welcome text field and the on hello button click method. The button text element uses the text attribute to set the text on the button, the value of hello exclamation point. The next file is a pom.xml file, which is used by Maven to build our project. Let's add a custom Maven property here in the properties block. We'll add an element, app.name, and the value I'll assign is fxmaven. We'll use this down below in our pom file. Let's scroll down. IntelliJ has added the Java FX dependencies we might need. In the Plugins block, we can see a plugin for Java FX Maven plugin. This plugin is essential for compiling and packaging Java FX applications. We'll see some of the features later in the video. For now, I want to place the default names that IntelliJ supplied with the custom property I created above. Instead of app, I'll make it dollar sign curly braces app.name. Copy that and paste it into the other two locations as well. Let's look at one last file before we get to the fun stuff. Let's open up the modules-info file. Our app is constructed using modules. An in-depth discussion of modules is complex and beyond the scope of this video. But the important things to note are the declaration of the module name, com.beginsecure.fxmaven. The requires line that declares the Java FX dependencies that we need to build our application. The opens line means the Java FX FXML module can use reflection to access classes in our code. 
and the export statement means the public classes and interfaces in our code can be used by others. It looks like Maven needs a refresh, probably because of the change I made, adding the property needs to be propagated. I'll click the reload button. Looks like no errors, great. Let's go back to the Holo World application and run our code from within the IDE as we would any project we're developing. From the gutter, let's select the green arrow and run hello application.main. Our application starts up and we see a window that reflects the FXML file we saw earlier. If we click the button, it invokes the on hello button click method in the controller and sets the value of the welcome text to the value welcome to Java FX application. So everything's working and let's cancel out of that. In our project window and the target directory, we see the directories that were created as a result of our execution of the code so far. Now let's open the Maven panel and select plugins and then Java FX. This gives us access to the Java FX plugin that was provided in our POM file. There are two goals, run and JLink. The Java FX colon run goal will run our application from within the Maven environment. The Java FX JLink goal is much more interesting. It creates a custom runtime image for our specific Java FX application. Sounds pretty cool, right? Let's run that. It's doing quite a bit for us, so we need to be patient while it assembles our image and builds our application for us. It finishes with an exit code of zero, meaning it was successful. Let's take a look at the project panel now under the target folder. It added a zip file called fxmaven as well as a directory with the same name. Interesting. Let's take a look and see what we have. Let's open a terminal window and run dir. We're in the root directory of our project. Let's cd into the target folder and run dir once again. Here we see our zip file. It's 26 meg, so there must be something good in there. And there's a directory with the same name. Let's cd into the fxmaven directory and run dir. This is the exploded zip file we saw above. It contains our application bundled and packaged and ready for deployment. Let's cd into the bin directory and run dir. Our code has been made ready to run on a Windows platform. We can see lots of DLL files, and there's a batch file with the name of our project. And if we run that, our application starts up just like it did in the IDE. I mentioned the zip file that we saw earlier was our application image. Let's prove that it works outside of the IDE. I'll open a file explorer window, and on my C drive, I'll create a directory called temp and change into that directory. And from IntelliJ, I'll copy over the zip file that JLink created for me into the temp directory. I'll right click on the zip file and extract it here. That takes just a second. In the new explorer window that pops up, I'll right click and open a terminal window in that directory. You can see I'm in the extracted directory under the temp folder that I just created. Now let's cd into the bin directory. And we can see our batch file is there, so let's run it. And there we go. Our app starts up and is ready to run. The JLink goal is an essential tool for efficiently packaging and distributing easy to deploy runtime images. I hope you found value in today's video. If you did, hitting that subscribe button would mean a lot to me. It's a simple click for you, but it's a big encouragement for me to keep going and creating more content that you enjoy. Plus, you'll stay updated on all the latest videos. Thanks for your support and remember to always begin secure.